Jesus bore our sicknesses, our weaknesses, our pains, our distresses, not until we get to be 60, 70, 80, or 100. He bore them for all time. We can be free. Let's expect renewal in here today. Healing in here today. The power of God manifested in here today. Today on the Believer's Voice of Victory, discover how to activate God's master plan for healing. Join Gloria Copeland as she reveals through Scripture how God has already made provision for you to be whole, spirit, soul, and body. God is good. You can trust Him with your life. Look at Psalm 91. We're preparing to pray right now in just a few minutes, and I won't read much of this. I'll just say that in Psalm 91, it's written to a specific type person who's doing something specific. It's written to the one that dwells in the secret place of the Most High and abides under the shadow of the Almighty. This is not for any Tom, Dick, and Harry. This is for an abider. This is for one who who abides in God and God abides in him. An obeyer, in other words. You say, well, that lets me out. I guess there's no hope for me. Yeah, there's hope for you. Repent if you're not an abider or an obeyer. Obeyer, Repent. Make Jesus the Lord of your life and you start over again with a clean slate. All sin wiped away. You can be the worst gang leader in the whole world, a murderer, a, a, any, you know, you can just be a despicable character and make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life and all the sin is washed away. And not only that, you're born over again. So the despicable character is history. The gang leader is history. You're born over again like a new baby, clean, pure, no sin. Hallelujah. And if you do commit sin from then on, you repent of it and you cleansed of it. So when I pray the prayer, if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you do it. Here's Here's what we do to get this kind of protection and deliverance. And it's full of healing. It's full of protection, this psalm is. Of course, you know that. You say, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Now, what do we do to get this healing, this protection, all the deliverance that's in this psalm? We abide, we obey, in other words. Abiding is obeying. And we say, We take the Lord as our refuge. And it's a refuge from sickness and disease, too. Lord, I take you as my refuge. You're my protector. You're my healer. You're my savior. You keep me from evil things. I abide under your shadow. I'm not coming in and going out. I'm abiding here in Jesus' name. I say, Lord, you're my healer. I say, Lord, you're my refuge. Now, that's our part. And then God begins to tell you all of the things, and I'd like to read it all, but I don't have time to. But in verse 4, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust his truth, and and, uh, his truth shall be a shield and a buckler. The truth is that God is good. You'll not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. That could be a bullet. That could be a missile. That could be bad people coming to get you. You know, Whatever it is, you're not to be afraid because you've got a refuge. His name is Jehovah, the Lord. Nor of the pestilence. So this has to do with your healing. Any kind of pestilence. You, you've got a refuge from pestilence. This would, this would have to do with biological warfare, chemical warfare. A refuge, hallelujah. We've been delivered from pestilence. You know, man-made things that come in a, 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 a vial. Even though uh, some kind of a biological weapon would be a, man-made. It doesn't say anything about it except man-made. It says if it's a pestilence, we've been delivered from it. If it's a pestilence, he'll protect us from it. If it's anthrax in a tube... It would be, we would be protected from it. Just because it's man-made doesn't undo. You know, I got to thinking about this when the first 
those things first began to happen. In fact, we were in, in England right after that, and people were really afraid over there. And they did a whole big article in the paper about all the biological warfare chemicals that could be released and the diseases that man had made. Who would have thought man would bother to make diseases and pass them around? Is there not enough disease to go around? You'd think so. But anyway, they gave the symptoms of it. They gave the name of it, the symptoms of it, and how long it'd take you to die. Was that not a comforting thing? <laughs> but I got to thinking about that. Well, we've been standing against sickness and disease for years and years and years and years. Just because a terrorist released it doesn't mean that I'm not redeemed from it. I'm redeemed from it. I'm redeemed from anthrax, however it would come into my presence, I've been redeemed from it in Jesus' name. I mean, I mean, I've been, one of them was bubonic plague. I'm redeemed from the plague. Every plague, every sickness, every plague is under that curse and Jesus has redeemed me from the curse. I tell you, that made me feel better, hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm redeemed from sickness and disease. And then it said down here, a thousand shall fall at your side. Right after pestilence and destruction, it says a thousand shall fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Now that is saying a lot. That's eleven thousand in one people. And I be the only people left. Glory to God. God knows how to deliver one in a family. One in a city. One in a world. Hallelujah. We're in a special place. We're in a bubble. We're in the presence and the power of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He wants us free from every sickness and every disease. Now it says down here that, uh, let me see which one I want to read. There shall no evil befall thee because you've made the Lord your habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Glory to God. No plague shall come nigh our dwelling. I don't care if it's man-made or just a, a natural happening of a plague. It shall not come nigh our dwelling. We've been delivered from it. God has given us uh, health and blessing and protection. He set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, the Lord says, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I'll answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him. All the plagues, all the pestilences, all the weapons, all the darkness listed above doesn't matter anything. It says with long life, if we'll honor God, if we'll follow God, if we'll obey God, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God wants us to live long and live strong. You might have a terminal disease today and it's not the will of God for you to stay that way. It's God's will for you to live well and strong and long, hallelujah. Glory to God. And the power of God is present today to heal, to deliver, to restore, to renew, to replace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that you live long and be satisfied. What does that mean? Well, you live till you're satisfied. You read of the patriarchs of old, they were satisfied and blessed and prosperous when they... One of them it said he drew his feet up in the bed and died. But he went ready and he went old. Old. We're talking old. Glory to God. Satisfied. Healed. I don't believe you have to, to, to yield in, in this life if you know the Lord. I don't believe you have to yield to, to uh, being old. You're going to get old. But you don't have to let old get in you. I mean, you know, we, the Lord talks about, I don't have time to look at it today, but you know the 133rd Psalm, third Psalm says he renews our youth like the eagles. He, 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 he uh, gives us deliverance from sickness, disease.
puts good in our mouth, renews our youth like the eagles. That's a very, very important healing scripture. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's the will of God for you and me to be strong and well. All the days of our life for us to live long on the earth and be satisfied when we live here. Having done everything that we wanted to do, needed to do, satisfied. Okay, Lord, I'm satisfied. Now, whenever that comes, you can go. But now don't go till you're satisfied. And don't yield to sickness and disease. Glory to God. I'm going to read uh, in Isaiah, and then we're going to pray and receive our deliverance. Hallelujah. Isaiah 53, this settles every issue right here. It is the will of God for you to be healed. And it's already been done. The price has already been paid. God does not have to do one more thing to, to heal you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. This is what Jesus, this is a, what Isaiah foresaw what would happen on the cross. Surely he has borne our griefs. This is Jesus on the cross. The prophet saw ahead. When Peter looked back, he looked back at it and saw what had happened and said so. Surely, this is for sure, he has borne our griefs. This is the Amplified. Sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses and carried our sorrows and pains. That would cover every sickness, every disease. That would just cover weakness. It would cover any kind of distress. It would cover grief. It would cover pains. He bore all that for us. Every punishment of sin, Jesus bore for us. Yet we considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as if with leprosy. But he was wounded for our transgressions, our sins. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquity. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him and with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. This has already been done. Isaiah was seeing it in the future, but Jesus has already done it. Now, Peter looked back and said, by his stripes, you were healed. We were healed. We are healed. Hallelujah. Because Jesus bore it for us. Sickness and disease would never have come in the earth except on the wings of sin. Had man never disobeyed God, there'd be no sickness and disease. There'd be no death. So Jesus has put us back in the garden. Glory to God. And, uh, and all we've got, uh, there's nothing left for us to do but the receiving of it. The receiving of it. The receiving of it. I can't get away from the scripture, so I'm going to turn to it, and then, then we're really going to pray. I sound just like Ken, don't I? I've been around him so long. Just keep preaching. Just keep preaching. It says, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. What a benefit. That's the first thing. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. You ought to get up every morning and see yourself crowned with loving kindness and tender mercies. Be thanking the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness today. Thank you for your tender mercy that hovers over me. Who satisfies your mouth with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That is a wonderful scripture. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That should be a confession of ours. Our youth, I mean, you could start that at 20 because 40's coming, 60's coming, should Jesus tarry? Our youth is renewed like the eagles. Glory to God. Now let's just believe for every person in here today to not only be healed, but that their bodies be renewed. I mean, if you've, if you've come in here with a cane or you can't walk well or you can't move well or there's something immobile about your body, or your eyes, you can't see well or hear well. And people just say, that's old age. Well, what does that have to do with us? 
Glory to God. Jesus bore our sicknesses, our weaknesses, our pains, our distresses. Not until we get to be 60, 70, 80, or 100. He bore them for all time. We can be free. Let's expect renewal in here today. Healing in here today. The power of God manifested in here today. Glory to God. Are you ready? Thank you, Jesus. Well, if you're ready to receive, you stand up and we're going to pray. We're going to believe God and the power of God is going to come into you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. And when it does, you can just act any way you want to. You can run, you can jump, you can shout, glory to God, hallelujah. And let heaven know you're appreciated and receive it. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Now let's pray. Now you you close your eyes, shut everybody out. You're the only one here right now. And be believing God as you pray this prayer. And pray it from your heart. Say it with your whole heart. Now there's something to what Ken taught us last night about saying loud. It does things for you. And I want us to put everything we've got into this prayer this morning. And when this prayer is over and you believe you receive your healing, you begin to do what you couldn't do before. You make an effort. Brother Hagin used to say, plug in with your faith. Make an effort. If you couldn't move something before, move it. If you couldn't get up, get up. Glory to God. Close your eyes. Get your mind on the Lord Jesus Christ who's already borne your sicknesses and carried your diseases. He's done the deed. Now we do the receiving. And say this from your heart. The gospel that I've heard heard is the power of God God. unto unto my salvation. I confess Jesus Christ is Lord over my life.
from the top of your head to the soles of your feet be made whole in Jesus' name. Be made whole. Now begin to do what you couldn't do before. If you couldn't bend over, bend over. If you couldn't do, run your legs, move your legs. If you couldn't run, run. If you couldn't stretch out your arm, throw it up there in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. We praise you. Thank you for the power of the living God coming on us from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Praise you, Lord. We praise you. We bless you. We magnify you. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I bless you. I worship you. I magnify you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Do what you couldn't do before. Move. Run. Shout. Jump. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'd suffered some bad lower back pain that was uh, quite bad and uh, basically resulting from poor posture sitting at my desk uh, working on a, a computer and uh, uh, it had, uh, had it improved but I remember it's been a long time since I've been able to touch my toes. I couldn't really get much beyond my knee and uh, so it was just great to be able to to uh, step out in, in, in faith and say well I'm, I'm going to try this, I'm going to uh, give it a go. Um, it's a choice and I'm going to make that choice. Gloria said, uh, mention, you know, touching your toes. Uh, I thought, well, you know, I, I, I believe the word and I, I've got to uh, step out in faith and, and do this. So just uh, where we were sitting up the back there, I, I just bent round and touched my toes and I was uh, just uh, thrilled to be able to, to do it for the first time in a, a long, long time. The faith is in the word. The, the, the you know God's word is 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 living and it's active and it's and it's there. But um, sometimes you've got to step out. And and I felt well, you know, uh, if we're going to do big things, then we got to do the little things. And the little thing for me was to just go touch my toes, just just uh, step out in that little bit of faith. And uh, the follow-on is to, to witness, and uh, it's by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb that, that we overcome. So um, so if I've stepped out in enough faith to touch my toes, then I've got to step out in enough faith to come forward and, and give glory to God and, and, uh, and overcome. <laughs> in the middle of your life circumstances, God has a message for you. You've got long life and you've got quality of life, satisfied life. God desires for you to be healthy and blessed. If we choose to follow God and His Word, then heaven and earth is called on to bless us. Discover a life full of wholeness, health, and blessings with Gloria Copeland's Be Made Whole Package. Her teaching series, Be Made Whole, Live Long, Live Healthy, combined with the free book, God's Will for Your Healing, will help you take the next step toward His best for you. You'll learn how to develop your faith for healing, why love is important to your health, why receiving your healing isn't a struggle, and why you have been redeemed from all of the curse. Be whole, be healed, and live long with the Be Made Whole Package. Order your copy today. To order Be Made Whole by Gloria Copeland, log on to kcm.org and order online or call us toll free at 1-800-575-4455. Request your teaching on cassette, CD, video or DVD and receive the book God's Will for Your Healing free. Just use the offer numbers you see on your screen. To order by mail, write to Kenneth Copeland, Fort Worth, Texas 76192. Order your copy of Be Made Whole today. Don't forget to get the Be Made Whole package because you need that. You need material all the time around you about healing. And when you get it, you need to listen to it and study it. Get your Bible. Mark, your, mark the scriptures in your Bible so you know right where the healing scriptures are. Today is your day to be healed or saved or delivered in any way that you need. God is always ready. 
So today, if you need healing, you just put your hand on the place in your body where he, where you need healing. I'm going to pray for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to be healed now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Be made whole in Jesus' name. Be made whole in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you say, I receive my healing. I take it. Uh, to, to have faith is to take something. You take it. You receive it in Jesus' name to yourself and, and, and say so today and tomorrow and every day. Even if a pain still ha- persists, you say, I'm not moved by that. I'm healed. You've got to come to a place when you're believing God, whatever. If it's for money, if it's for a house, if it's for healing. If it's for salvation, you have to come to a place where you take it, you believe it, it's yours. And you don't let the devil or anybody else talk you out of it. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, that's your first step to wholeness. And all you have to do is just say, Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. Come into my life and do something with it. Just tell him that. Tell him in your own words, but give yourself into his hands. And if you did that today, we want to give you the free salvation package. These are books, five books that are absolutely free and a brochure on how to study the Bible. We want to be a blessing to you. We want to help you. And once you get born again, you've got to get established in the Word of God. So ask for these and we'll send them to you absolutely free. Brother Copeland will be preaching at Eagle Mountain International Church New Year's Eve. And we want you to come. It's going to be a great time. Let's bring in the new year in faith. Hallelujah. It'll change your whole year. I'll see you again next time. And remember that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. Today's teaching is now available on CD, audio cassette, DVD, and VHS. To request your copy, log on to kcm.org or call us toll-free at 1-800-575-4455 and ask for the program number on your screen. This really is the grandfather of them all. Azusa Street, 1906 was the seed. Azusa Street, 2006 is the heart. If you can just imagine, born again, Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking, healing, believing, shouting, wild people like you and me getting together in one place from all over the world. Man, I'm talking about the biggest Holy Ghost outpouring praise session. This old world will never get over it. Praise God. Experience five powerful days of ministry that will change your life and this world forever. April 25th to the 29th, 2006 in Los Angeles, California. For more information, visit AzusaStreet100.net. Next Sunday on the Believer's Voice of Victory. That's where our abundance is. That's where our prosperity is. That's where our peace is, is on that plan that God, that track that God has laid out for us.